Gentlemen, today we are going to discuss if a retrograde planet is always bad. I get this question all the time in my comments. I have this retrograde planet. Is it going to be bad always for natural malefics, for functional malefics, for natural benefits, functional benefits? All categories. Does it mean that just because if a planet is retrograde, it's going to be a disaster always? Or rather, does it mean that the dasha of that particular planet is going to end up in a disaster? Well, that's something which we need to address very carefully because sometimes it can be the case, sometimes it may not be the case, and sometimes it may be the exact opposite, right? So... What is it? How do you study a retrograde planet, first of all? And there's, there's not very clear-cut instruction anywhere. You know, How should you study a retrograde planet? I mean, there are, but there are no statements which uh, say directly that a retrograde planet will be good or bad. Okay. So, before we go into the thing as, you know, good or bad, always ask this question to yourself. Good or bad means from a particular perspective, particular event of life, a particular area of life. Okay, So do not get into this understanding that a retrograde planet will be bad for you for all areas of life or it will be good for you for all areas of life. No, it won't be, right? Because you, you see, you have to understand how astrology works, how planets work. So when a planet is placed in a particular house, the planet will give results of that particular house, right? But the problem is every house will be 12th to, to some other house, right? And that house, which is second from it, uh, there could be issues in that house. For example, if a planet is in the sixth house, so 6th house is 12th from the 7th sec house of marriage. So there could be issues in marriage, but it could bring you some career opportunities. So now if a, a person comes and asks you, having a retrograde planet in the 6th house, is it good or is it bad? What will you tell him? What? So if the person is not married, if the person has just started off his profession, then you may say, well... Uh, Maybe it's not that bad for you. It will be good for your profession. But suppose a person is around uh, 25 plus maybe and is wanting to get married. And then he comes and asks, okay, sir, I have this retrograde planet. Irrespective of the fact the planet is a malefic, benefic, natural or functional, whatever. Imagine there's any random planet, right? And then uh, he asks you, uh, sir, will this be good or bad for me, right? Then you have to ask him, well, sir, uh, what are your plans for the next maybe five years? Or imagine um, a planet like uh, Venus is there in the sixth house and Venus is retrograde. And imagine, you know, Saturn Mahadasha is going on and Venus Antadasha is going on. That's around three years, right? So, so then you have to ask the person, well, what is your plan for the upcoming three years from, you know, 26 to 29? Now, do you plan to get married or... Uh, what is it? Do you want to get a master's degree or a PhD or you want to, if you are already married, are you planning for uh, children or do you plan to leave your job and open your own business or do you want to go abroad for studies? Do you want to get or you want to change your domain or you want to get a new job or what is that which you want to do in these three years? Because depending on that answer, we have to tell him, will this be good or bad for him? Because if the person says, oh, you know, I am married and uh, I am planning to have kids and then this retro planet in the sixth house is active, this could give him a tough time because this will or this could end up hampering uh, his relationship with his wife and then things could go haywire, right? And in worst case, there could be separation also. I mean, worst to worst to worst case scenario, right? Not for everybody, but worst to worst to worst case, okay? 
then you tell the person oh yeah yeah it's a very nice uh, thing for you um, and then he will end up uh, not believing astrology later on right so therefore on the contrary if the person says oh i am only 25 26 now i i don't want to get married i want to have a good career so then and then he says you know i want a job i want a better job then maybe uh, something can happen right so this is the first principle that you should understand before you jump to a conclusion that if a retrograde planet is good or bad, always focus on the event of life. Without that, do not give an answer. It will lead to a catastrophe, right? Because I know so many astrologers who will say, oh, retrograde planet is here. Bad. This is BAD. Everything is going to be hell. You're going to rot in hell. You're going to burn in hell. You're going to die in hell right fortunately it doesn't work like this <laughs> so this is the first thing now the other thing you have to understand is a retrograde planet is not a better planet or a more terrible planet what, what, what is retrograde planet retrograde planet shows intensity basically a planet which is retrograde is a very intense planet so basically what it means is Whatever the planet indicates in your horoscope, the intensity is three times more. Now, you cannot quantify in real life, you know, what does it mean to have a three times more intensity? But you can understand figuratively. May not be literally, but at least figuratively you can understand from a conceptual level that it is going to be much more intense. It's going to be more demanding. It's going to be full of anxiety right this is what a retrograde planet is so imagine you have a retrograde planet in your 10th house so what happens and your query is about profession of course then it can happen that there is this panic inside you there is this anxiety inside you to get a new job or to apply for a whatever you know, a new job but the thing is you you will have this feeling within that why do I don't have this job? When will I have this job? If I don't have this job, what will happen to me? You may feel that the world is going to collapse, right? So, therefore, you have to understand that whenever there is a retrograde planet involved in any particular uh, horoscope for a person, that area of life is going to be very, very, very demanding and very, very forceful, full of anxiety and pressure, basically, right? Because a retrograde planet is one which is moving backwards in comparison, uh, if you see, you know, with the Earth. So it's not a forward energy. See, the thing is, when we say that a retrograde planet is moving backwards, does it mean that the planet wants to move backwards? No, it wants to move forward, right? No planet wants to move backwards. Every planet wants to move forward. But the problem is the planet has to move backward first, get something, and then move forward. So do not see retrogression as moving backwards. See retrogression as a step in moving forward. Because every planet wants to move forward. But now what happens is there is anxiety because there is unfinished business. There is, the homework is not done basically. So then uh, people may feel that I'm stuck or I'm doing something again and again on my past. But why are you doing it? Because you want to go ahead, right? So in that sense, retrograde planet is also a forward moving planet. Although it's retrograde, but it's not backward. It is still forward, right? Not forward as per, you know, definition of astrology. Uh, but the ultimate agenda, the aim, the end result is to move forward and get things going for the future, right? So therefore, there is very high intensity. So once you understand this and uh, you study the entire horoscope, what is going on with sun, moon and the ascendant lord and other plants, that is the time you will realize um, that a retrograde planet is a very intense planet. It shows, you know, three times more intensity, right? It shows a craving. It shows a craze. It shows some madness, right? So, therefore, 
uh, retrograde planets can be very uh, helpful for people who want to be extraordinarily successful, right? Especially with the first house, 10th house or 11th house, because they have this craving, this unsatiable, insatiable uh, hunger for you know, name, fame, power, position, money, wealth, recognition, authority, and all this. So that motivates them like nobody else, right? So therefore, you have to understand that a retrograde planet is not necessarily a bad planet or a good planet, but it is an intense planet, right? And the intensity will pertain to the house where it sits and the houses or the house which it lords, okay? Because uh, you have to understand uh, that a retrograde planet means there is a very intense desire from the soul perspective to get things done, right? And we know that sun, moon will never be retrograde. They are always forward. And Rahu Ketu are by default retrograde. So we have the other five planets, right? So they can be retrograde. And sometimes, you know, two retrograde planets can be together or whatever. Two retrograde planets may aspect each other, right? So I would love to hear from you uh, in the comments. Uh, what is your experience of retrograde planets? Do you think that you have terribly suffered in relation to the houses that your retrograde plan represents. So, for example, if your seventh lord is retrograde, do you feel that you have suffered in your married life or during the dasha of that planet, the antar or the mahadasha, there was a separation or divorce or something like this, right? So, please let me know in the comments. And as usual, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to Exotic Astrology. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your career, marriage, health, or any other area like your spiritual life, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you deal with the ecstatic energy of retrograde plants. Thank you.